<coughs> welcome to uh, the course heat exchangers fundamentals and design analysis. If you recall, we have um, uh, started learning on the um, micro heat exchangers and for micro heat exchangers it is important to know that how heat transfer takes place, convective heat transfer takes place through micro passages or micro channels. So, we have spent some time, we have taken some example and I have told that uh, the um, fluid flow particularly gas flow through narrow size passages to micro passages that is unique and that has got some difference with similar kind of flow situation when that takes place through a conventional uh, sized conventionally sized um, channel. Uh, so, let us proceed with that uh, <coughs> heat transfer in gas flow and in micro channel we are considering. So, if you recall that we have told that there could be depending on Nutsen number, we can have conventional flow or continuum flow we can have continuum flow with slip condition at the wall, there could be transitional flow and there could be free molecular flow. So, let us say the Nutsen number is such or the channel dimension is such that based on Nutsen number we are getting the conventional flow only that within the channel there will be, uh, there will not be much difference in the flow phenomena compared to a large side channel. But in case of micro channel, there are some speciality. When the channel is of small size, there is some speciality. Speci speciality. There is some unique features. What are those? That even when the gas flow is in continuum region, the correlation for micro channel flow do not hold good macro channel flow do not hold good for micro channel. Why? One of the observation is that transition from laminar to turbulent, turbulent that occurs in a range and that range is 400 to 900. So, this range is very small. In case of large size channel, this transition occurs around R e is equal to Reynolds number is equal to 2000. But here it is occurring within a narrow range 400 to 900. Reason is due to the manufacturing of this micro channel, these channels are rough. The roughness that is a relative uh, quantity here, the channel dimensions are small, but whatever manufacturing method we adopt particularly the special manufacturing method which we adopt for making these small channels, they cannot make, they can make the channel size small, we can get small channel size, but the roughness sizes are not scaled down equally. So, then what will happen that the roughnesses are or roughness elements are large. So, that large roughness that is one feature which is special to micro channel. Then <coughs> due to the manufacturing technique, uh, the roughnesses are non-uniformly distributed. When we are um, uh, fabricating a larger size channel, then what happens that roughness is uniformly distributed over the surface area. But here in case of micro channel, the roughnesses could be very non isotropically distributed over the surface area. So, due to these two effects what we will find that there could be a early transition of laminar to turbulent flow. There could be an early transition from laminar to turbulent flow and uh, due to this early transition what we will have that turbulent flow gives good mixing and good heat transfer. So, there could be a tendency of high rate or rather improvement of heat transfer in case of micro channel, micro channel flow. And obviously, in such cases the, uh, the correlations which we used to have for macro channel will not hold good. 
So, what I have written here due to the effect of roughness there is improvement in heat transfer a large number of correlations are available just for example, I have given two, two correlations that for two different ranges of Reynolds number we will have these two correlation for Nusselt number for calculation of heat transfer. Calculation of heat transfer coefficient for estimating heat transfer. You need not think that these are the only correlation there are many many correlations similar correlations are there for um, friction factor also which I have not given because it will be boring to give uh, go through all this correlation as and when needed depend um, uh, getting a uh, good reference book or handbook or uh, technical paper one can pick up these correlations. What I like to stress upon which is very important that even in the continuum level or even in the continuum region if the <coughs> passage size is small then we can have uh, a difference in heat transfer between the small side channel and a large side channel. So, obviously, we should need to have different sets of correlation this is important to know. With this let us proceed well now let us think of we are considering uh, gas flow through narrow passages. So, let us think of what are or let us uh, look into what are the effect of gas property. So, Nutsen number that can be defined by the gas properties like here we have got Nutsen number the basic definition is from the molecular <coughs> free path and uh, uh, the um, scale length of the system or problem we are considering. So, mean pre free path that is one important parameter of Nutsen number. And Nutsen number is important when we are dealing with micro scale heat transfer. So, mean free path calculation uh, which depends on gas property. So, lambda is given by this formula. So, lambda is equal to mu into root over pi upon rho under root 2 r t mu is the dynamic viscosity, rho is the density, r is the gas constant and t is the temperature. So, here you see then the mean free path that is different for different gases it should be and we have ga uh, we have uh, tabulated here air, helium, hydrogen and nitrogen all are at same temperature r values are different rho are different mu different. So, the molecular free mean free path that is also different. So, obviously, the <coughs> gases which are lighter gases they will have larger molecular mean free path. Uh, before a collision they should cover larger distance. So, what we can find for helium and hydrogen air and nitrogen they are very close. So, 0 0.068 and 0 0.066. So, these two are close and these two are small compared to hydrogen or helium. Uh, with this let us go to another aspect. Channel dimension in micrometer for different types of flow for gases at one atmosphere. Two, uh, uh, four, tire, four different kind of flow I have defined towards the beginning of this course uh, towards the beginning of this topic that is continuum flow, continuum flow with slip boundary then transitional flow and free molecular flow. So, for different gases uh, <coughs> we have given the channel dimension in millimeter one example let us take for air if the channel dimension in uh, micrometer it is greater than 67 micrometer then it is continuum flow. If it is within 0 0.67 to 67 micrometer then it is slip flow 0 0.0067 to 0 0.67 micrometer then it is transition flow and 
less than 0 0.0067 micrometer then it is free molecular flow. I like to remind you once again that for this four <coughs> different kind of flow regimes we will have different kind of physical laws. For the first case uh, we are familiar with the laws that let us say we are solving a uh, momentum um, balance uh, problem. <coughs> so, Navier-Stokes equation will be used for continuum flow, but again we have to consider just uh, sometimes back I have discussed that viscous uh, sorry the, the wall uh, roughness that plays a very important role. So, the uh, many of the conventional correlations we cannot use or we have to use with caution. Then we have got the slip flow region where, <coughs> where Navier-Stokes equation will be useful, but the boundary conditions are different. Then we have got transitional flow here we have to have some sort of statistical uh, laws uh, like Boltzmann technique. Uh, or we can have uh, the uh, Monte Carlo method. Then we have got free molecular flow each and every molecule uh, motion of each and every molecule becomes important there. So, this I have explained earlier and here also I once again I like to tell you and here we can see that how with channel dimension we can have different kind of flow for different kind of gases. Okay. So, the channel dimension for slip flow will be different for air and hydrogen. So, this we have to keep it in mind. <coughs> Let us go to the next uh, information. Here all the different kind of uh, uh, flow phenomena has been described and uh, hydraulic diameter has been given in uh, millimeter or micrometer. Conventional channel generally hydraulic diameter is greater than 3 millimeter. Mini channels uh, 3 millimeter to uh, 200 micromillimeter, uh, 200 micrometer. Micro channel so 200 micrometer to 10 micrometer. Transitional channel 10 micrometer to 0 0.1 micrometer. Transitional micro channels we will have 10 micrometer to 1 micrometer, transitional nano channels 1 micrometer to 0 0.1 micrometer and molecular nano channels that will be 0 0.1 micrometer <coughs> and less. So, you see that uh, people for convenience they have named the channels this is not very sacrosanct there could be some difference and this is for gas flow. Uh, some people say that we should follow the same <coughs> kind of um, uh, classification for liquid flow or flow for two phase fluid, but some people say no for liquid flu flow or for flow of multi phase uh, mixture two phase mixture we should have different classification, but it just gives an idea that what we can consider as conventional channel, micro channel, uh, <coughs> transitional channel etcetera. Let us go to another information. So, we have got some idea regarding micro channel. Now, micro channel and mall side channel what could be the their dimension. So, that also we have some idea. What is the shape of the micro channel? <coughs> the shape of the micro channels are shown here. So, you see first we can see a rectangular micro channel then this is kind of a trapezoidal this is part of a circle the cross section is part of a circle. This is an hexagon and this is a circular passage. So, let me tell you these different kind of passages are passages are seen in micro channel design or in micro heat exchanger in micro heat sink because 
most of the cases these micro channels are manufactured by some special techniques. The conventional techniques are not suitable for making micro channel. We will come to this aspect very soon. Uh, and out of all these shapes, though there are circular shapes, circular passages, passages of circular cross section uh, present in micro heat exchangers, micro heat sinks, but that is not very common. Uh, at the beginning, I have started with an example of a cell and tube heat exchanger where micro tubes are used, but that is not very common when there are number of passages in a heat exchanger, generally they are of non-circular cross section. So, this is also one uh, <coughs> specialty of micro channel heat sinks or micro channel heat exchangers that the passages are in most of the cases non-circular. So, it should not be thought that circular passages are not possible, but they are rare. <coughs> Let us go to the next slide. So, one method only I have shown micro channels or micro channel heat sinks, micro channel uh, heat exchangers, uh, they are made of many different kind of material. One could be silicon wafer. So, from the silicon wafer, how we are making these channels? So, this is one way one can see that let us say we have taken two wafer on one wafer we have made this kind of uh, impression and in another wafer we have made this kind of impression and then these two wafers are bond together. So, if these two wafers are bond together, so uh, we can get rectangular passages like this, we can get a rectangular passage like this, a triangular passage like this, a semicircular passage. So, you can see that <coughs> this is how the micro channels are formed and even with this method we can um, create some sort of a micro channel heat sinks or heat sink or micro channel heat exchanger. And probably this uh, particular slide explains why we get uh, different kind of channel geometry because the manufacturing method is completely different. Of course, this is not the only manufacturing method that is why we get different kind of micro channels, uh, micro channels of different shapes. The shapes which are not very common in case of conventional heat transfer equipment. So, with this <coughs> let us go to the next slide. Here we are giving a taxonomy of microfabrication technologies. Microfabrication when I am telling or when I am mentioning microfabrication, this is meant for making micro channels and ultimately uh, they can be used for micro heat exchangers. So, this is for your micro channels. Now, <coughs> what are the technique? So, one side we have got traditional manufacturing, uh, traditional method of manufacturing miniaturized channels and the other side we have got modern method of manufacturing. Let me tell you I have mentioned somewhere and again I like to um, stress upon the point that <coughs> as the micro channel heat exchangers are becoming more important there are more areas of uh, application day by day, uh, we are finding more application. So, the manufacturing or fabrication of micro channel that is also an active field of research and different new techniques are being evolved. So, conventional technique <coughs> or traditional technique if we see that let us go to the conventional machining technique which has been mentioned as shop techniques, milling and sawing, electro discharge, ultrasonic, water jet cutting. So, these are some of the methods, these are some of the methods which are used for making micro channel. Uh, milling and sawing, 
actually milling is a good method for making micro channel. So, it will create open micro channel and then if there is a top cover we can get the closed channel and with milling particularly micro milling end milling kind of a thing what we will get we will get channels of uh, probably we will we, we will be conven uh, conveniently I mean one can convenient uh, conveniently make uh, rectangular channel, but the channel need not be always very straight channel we can have zigzag or serpentine channel we can have bends etcetera in the channel. So, that is possible with micro milling particularly end milling type of uh, operation machining operation. Then with sawing also one can have straight channel at least straight channels one can have with sawing circular saw one can have straight channel. With diamond cutter one can have one can create channels. So, these are the methods by which one can do and where EDM is again another method one can make channels of unique shapes and also um, the whole design if there are bends etcetera by proper manufacturing process conventional manufacturing process, but by proper planning of manufacturing process those type of channels can be made. So, this is one way particularly for manufacturing metallic uh, micro channels micro passages this is important. Then <coughs> there is another method manufacturing technique which generally is not used for manufacturing of metallic component, but for other component these processes are used that is printed circuit board the way we fabricate printed circuit board using the same procedure we, we can uh, uh, make micro channels small channels with uh, uh, some sort of bends etcetera with serpentine features we can make it. Then <coughs> stereolithography is one method by which we can make it. Then electroforming molding these are the method by which we can make it. So, uh, though I, I like to give a uh, word of caution that though very large number of methods have been given in this particular sl slide. So, it is not uh, kind of all inclusive there could be some other methods like <coughs> some other forming methods that can be also used for making micro channel. So, here one can see that by some molding method it can be done. So, with this we come to an end of uh, traditional technique. The left side of the traditional technique is for generally uh, uh, adopted for metallic parts and right side we are adopting it for other technology other manufacturing uh, processes, but they can be taken for making micro channel also. The modern technique, so modern technique again we have um, got several uh, classification one is batch technique. So, batch technique if we consider, so one is silicon based. Many of the micro channel heat sinks and sometimes even a small heat exchanger can be made out of silicon and it is made out of silicon because we have to have electronic component cooling is a uh, very important uh, <coughs> feature for having reliable circuitry for higher scale of integration. And, uh, for that we have to have micro channel um, in electron uh, sorry uh, silicon wafer. So, so, the technique which are silicon based are uh, can be classified as bulk surface and surface <coughs> on uh, sorry system on chip. Then bulk that can be done by wet chemical etching and dry plasma etching. So, Silicon wafer on silicon wafer if we have to have these passages, so generally some sort of etching process can be done chemical etching process is there or dry plasma etching process is there. Uh, 
for some metallic component also one can adopt uh, some sort of uh, chemical or electrochemical process some sort of etching process with uh, proper masking that can be adopted. Then uh, <coughs> we can have liga or UV liga ultraviolet liga. Liga actually is a German word for lithography. So, some technique of lithography. This is a um, course of heat exchanger we cannot go into details, but for micro heat exchanger what are the methods let us see very quickly. Then, then we can have micro molding and uh, uh, <coughs> micro stamping process etcetera. Then uh, for other materials uh, what kind of other materials we can have? We can have glass, ceramic, metal already I, we have told, but some of the metal processing can be done by these modern techniques also. Then hybrid processes are there, uh, then wafer bonding already I have told that on the wafer you create channel and then you bond to wafer to give some sort of a spe specific shape. Fusion anodic adhesive, so that is also one way of uh, getting uh, unique channels and then assembly packaging. And uh, um, there are other methods by laser you can have uh, many different kind of um, passages done. And then there are some other technique which is which has been mentioned here as disruptive technique. New materials, new processes, new design, uh, nanotechnology. So, these are some sort of disruptive processes by which things can be done. Uh, so, basically due uh, with the help of non-conventional processes we can have it. Laser processes I cannot discuss due to paucity of time in details, but by laser processing a very large number of passages or very large number of geometries, small features that can be made and that can be used for micro scale heat transfer and micro scale heat exchanger fabrication. So, what happens? We uh, make micro uh, passages after that they have to be stacked and joined. So, diffusion bonding is one method by which it can be done. Laser welding or laser based joining process, electron beam based joining process, these are also processes which are used. So, just to give a um, give a brief idea how these heat exchangers are made, because these techniques, some of these techniques are cutting edge techniques, new techniques techniques which are under development, but they are very important if the micro scale heat exchangers are to be made. So, <coughs> with this I come to an end of today's lecture. What we will do? We will we have some idea regarding the uh, micro scale heat transfer and micro passages, uh, micro channels how they are fabricated. We will take it forward and then ultimately very quickly we, we will end with some idea regarding micro heat exchanger. Thank you.